Hi everyone and welcome to Understanding the Brain. We're going to talk about the neurobiology of everyday life. I'm really excited about this. I've learned so much by uh, preparing for this class and I think that we're going to learn a lot as, we, as you go along in this class and as we talk to each other every week. Just to give you an overview of what we're going to concern ourselves with, I want to share with you a story which is really shows the power and the profundity of what our nervous system does for us. And the story is by Jean-Dominique Bobby, and it's called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Jean-Dominique Bobby was the uh, editor of Elle, the leading fashion magazine in France. And he lived in Paris, and he lived a very exciting cosmopolitan life. He had two children. And one day he was driving, and he had a sudden onset uh, incapacitation. It turned out to be a stroke, a massive stroke in his brainstem. He, he says in the beginning of, of the prologue, before this happened, he'd never even heard of the brainstem. Well, um, you're going to hear about the brainstem. So he had this massive stroke in the brainstem, and this left him paralyzed. So he couldn't move his arms or his legs. He couldn't point. He was on a respirator because he could not breathe on his own. He couldn't swallow. So he was, uh, they had to deal with him drooling. Um, at one point in, in this book, which I'll tell you how he wrote in a minute, um, he says he was very happy to get his own clothes back because if he had to drool, he at least wanted to drool on cashmere. So, uh, so what, how did he write this book? He's paralyzed. He can't write. He can't speak. He's on a respirator. He can't move his laryngeal muscles. He can't really form his upper uh, airway to, to, to form words. So how did he do it? Well, it turns out that people with this syndrome, and it's called the locked-in syndrome, oftentimes can move an eyelid. And indeed, he could move an eyelid. And they, they realize that because, in fact, locked-in syndrome patients often are able to do that. So what they, what occurred was there was a, a French alphabet. In other words, the most common letters in the French language were listed from most common to least common. And when a per person would point to each one of these letters or read them aloud, and when they got to the correct letter, Bobby would blink his uh, working eyelid. And he blinked out letter by letter this entire story. That's, that's just such an amazing action, such an amazing accomplishment. So with the one avenue that Bobby had to express himself, he did. And he did so extremely eloquently. I just reread this. I, I think I've read it five or six times. And it, it's, it's just a really interesting, moving book. And what struck me when I read it this time was was the craving, the craving for, for expression, for life, uh, for participation. Uh, he, unfortunately, um, he died just after this book was published. Um, uh, it, it's, it's a hard thing to live uh, with the body not um, being supported by, by the central nervous system. So the title, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, refers to his, his yin and yang. He's in a diving bell in the sense that his body is not under his control. He cannot move. He is paralyzed. At the same time, he has all sorts of sensory abnormalities. He's feeling, he feels pain even though he can't feel touch. He cannot feel actual stimuli, actual things that are happening to his body, but he feels these abnormal sensations akin to amputation pain. There's nothing there, but a person feels pain. Well, he feels that kind of uh, sensation as well. So he's stuck in this diving bell. A diving bell is an iron uh, globe that, you can, that people used to use to, as submersibles to go down into the ocean. And he, that's all he can do, is be in this... Um, in this constrained 
uh, existence where he can't actually move himself. But at the same time, he can, he can soar. He can soar with his brain. He can soar in his thoughts and his emotions, his memories and his feelings. And he does. And it, it, he describes, for instance, one, um, he describes his feelings about Empress Eugenie at the Naval Hospital. And he describes this entire interaction with, uh, with at the hall in the Naval Hospital with these various pieces of art. And he describes it all in the present tense. It's as real as, a, as if it's happening. It's happening in his brain. And in fact, that's our reality. So we're going to use the diving bell and the butterfly and Bobby's experiences, his, the things that he lost, the things that he retained as a framework within which we can explore the nervous system. Okay, we're going to get started now. <music>